Hey, what's going on there, Dice Rolls? Paul Turner here, and I'll be your DM for a little while here for part two of Anime 5e. If you have not watched the first video, it's okay. You can go ahead and check it out. I'll put a little link right up over here, and you can check that out. If you're brand new to the channel, by the way, thank you for visiting. Appreciate you being here. Be sure to click that subscribe button down there, and you'll get videos like this in your inbox on a regular basis. So today, uh, we're talking about Anime 5e, which is the anime version of 5e. And uh, we're going to talk about adding your race and your class. So let's go ahead and jump into the primer. So let's go ahead and check out some of the races you can choose here. As you can see, Arch Fiend. I mean, you can play your normal, uh, you know, Player's Handbook races, Dragonborn, so forth, all those. And then they have the new races, which is the Arch Fiend. And I'm not going to show pictures from all of these. I'm going to save that for another uh, video. If you want me to do each of these, if you want me to kind of do all that, just leave me a comment down below and, you know, I'll work that out. But I think all the characters are really, all the races are really, really cool looking. And uh, I do want to show them, but for the sake of time, I just, we're just going to go through the primer and we'll go over these. But you have the Arch Fiend, you have the uh, Asray, the uh, Blink Beast, the Demon Naga, the Fairy, the Grey, the Half Dragon, the Half Troll, the Hod, the Kodama, the uh, Nekogen, the Parasite, the Satyr, and the Slime. Now, once again, all these have their points to them. So if you want to choose that out of your 80 discretionary points, uh, you're going to pay the 15 points for the Archfiend, etc., 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 as you go down. And the one race that they have featured here, a Nekogen is a humanoid with large cat ears, a tail, and some feline facial features and behavioral traits. Some have fur as well, with colors and textures as diverse as actual felines. Though it might only cover a portion of the body, it is unclear if a human and a cat were genetically fused in a laboratory, if they mixed during an evolutionary process, or if they are simply a separate species. The majority of scholars support the latest supposition. Most cat people in anime tend to be female, very genki, highly energetic and cheerful, and extremely agile. And uh, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but Genki or Genkai. I bet it's Genkai. Let's go with that. Uh, Nekogen typically love to explore a, as part of an adventuring group, and they keep teammates on their toes with enthusiasm. Nekogen fit well with uh, Isekai and uh, the Isekai student class. Their human body gaining feline properties during the interdimensional exile. Bender, Broker, and Tech Knight classes are also common. Now, as you can see here, as we scroll up, that you have your rank. So you can buy your points for each of these. This is what included you. When you buy the eight points here at the bottom here, this is what adds up the eight points is that you get a dexterity plus two, you get an edge initiative, you get features, uh, dark vision, 60 feet, heightened senses, hearing, mulligan, four rerolls per session. That's pretty good. Uh, you get special movement, cat-like, uh, and you get a deficit easily distracted. Uh, and so that's, that's cool. You, I mean, it's a cat, right? I mean, really, if you threw a ball of yarn at a Necogen, it's quite possible that they might go chase that. So it's, it's something you might want to be aware of if the villain in your game happens to be into yarn. So uh, let's go ahead and continue on to the classes. And the classes are also, once again, very, very cool stuff here. You get proficiency bonuses. Let's go over here. The proficiency bonus, each class grants the, grants the character a plus two proficiency bonus at first level worth four points. This modifier is added to D20 dice rolls if the character is proficient in certain areas. So attack rolls, skill checks, ability checks, saving throws, etc. Now, some of the classes that they offer here, let me go ahead and scoot this over. The classes that they offer here, and you can see their hit dice and their description. You have an adventurer, which is the most flexible of all characters with the ultimate freedom to becoming anything. The bender, a master of their specific element who can bend forces of nature to their will. A broker, a character who thrives on connections to find the obscure and obtain the desired. I can see a broker being used in the Acquisitions Incorporated, by the way. I think that would be kind of cool. Dynamic spellbinder, a magical manipulator who has extensive control over a chosen sphere of influence, a hunter, a cunning professional who seeks out their prey for bounties, thrill, justice, and more, an Asekai student, an enigma who has suddenly transported from Earth and now has wondrous abilities, magical guy girl, a champion for love and justice who fights for the forces of light and goodness, and the ninja, a master warrior of the shadow arts who is wrapped in mystery and traditions, pet monster trainer, a collector of and loyal friend to cute pets that serve as companions and weapons, 
Psionicist, a character who expands their humanoid evolution to unlock amazing mental powers. The Samurai, a deadly and honorable fighter who follows the ancient code of the warrior. Shadow Warrior, a champion knight who achieves harmony with the negative dimensional planes. The Tech Knight, a member of the martial order of the Tech Knights who protect the innocent. And the Warder, a free-spirited warrior who has learned the mystical arts of inscribing wards on flesh. Now, the class that they choose to look at here, let me go ahead and go to this. The example is the Hunter. And the Hunter, you can see, let me kind of move this over so you can see this a little bit. It gives you uh, the first, second, third, all the way through 20th. And let's take a look over here at some of the qualities of the hunter. Many people assume that hunters would follow the path of the lone wolf, but that's rarely true. Hunters value their social networks and work to establish relationships with many people and some monsters from diverse backgrounds. These connections may unexpectedly help hunters find contracts or locate their bounties and have added benefit of keeping hunters grounded. A hunter's individual emotion is not easy to predict since their reasons for following this class path are diverse. Some do it for the thrill and the danger while others seek coin and fame. Some are seeking to right wrongs and bring moral balance to their corner of the world, while others enjoy exacting revenge and inflicting pain. The world has much to offer, yet in the end, there is always the hunt. Hunters are comfortable allying with members of any class that can provide them assistance or at least won't get in their way. They get along exceptionally well with brokers since both professionals value the connections and resourcefulness of the other. Hunters recognize and respect the dedication of other martial classes, such as the ninja, pet monster trainers, samurai, shadow warriors, tech knights, and wand warders. Hunters are often uncomfortable around those with magical and paranormal powers, such as the benders, dynamic spellbinders, magical guy girls, and psionicists. Now, here's some of the class feature. This is what you're paying for. Hunters gain the following class features. Equivalent point uh, costs are provided in the brackets after each entry. Hit dice is D10. That's five points there. 10 plus constitution modifier hit points at first level. 1d6 or 1d10 or 6 constitution modifier HP at higher levels. Proficiencies, light and medium armor, shield proficiency for three points, simple and martial weapon proficiencies for four, one tool proficiency of choice, strength and intelligence saving throw proficiencies, three skill proficiencies of choice. Now, when I think of hunters, I give you some of my favorite hunters. I like uh, Robert Muldoon as the game warden in Jurassic Park. Uh, he is, you know, clever girl. Uh, I also like uh, Ken Wheatley from Jurassic Park uh, Fallen Kingdom. And uh, I also like Van Pelt. So uh, from the 1995 film Jumanji, uh, played by Jonathan Hyde. And I just think those are all really cool types of hunters that I would like to play. And I also think of aliens, too. I think of uh, the, the, the I'm sorry, not aliens, but predators, uh, where all the these various kind of hunters are in there. And you could maybe use some of those as a model to be able to do that. All right, those are some of the races and some of the classes of Anime 5e. I would love to know, what are you interested in? What are you interested in playing? Which race, which class? Leave me some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Let's know you like the video and you want more of them. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.